Do you think they just played for played for um, food and drink and maybe somewhere to sleep? Did it, do you think they ever made any money back there in the thirties? I think at times they did. Yeah, and that if you compared it to what they would have had been making had they been laborers. Um, I've read or heard different bits about people saying that they could sing in a little juke joint and get tips or on the street and make more than they could working a week in the field picking cotton. So, yeah, I think they did all right. Mm -hmm. they, they, they lived a life of insecurity because when you're itinerant, you don't have a place to stay, so you have to, you have to take care of business, find a place to stay, feed yourself, stay out of trouble and be able to move on. And they got pretty good at it. I think I'm pretty good at it too, yeah, to it. survive as long as I have. Now tell me about your, your guitar. You've told me about that. You've had that some time, haven't you? That's Yeah, 35 years. I think 1977 or thereabouts is when I got old Led Bessie. And I started looking about 10 years previous to that to find an old steel guitar. I came across one or two that I could have maybe got my hands on. I would have had to trade my car for one. And that wasn't even a sure thing. But I was tempted to, to see if I could trade my car to a guy for the steel guitar that he had. But that didn't happen and I saw one hanging in a music shop and the owner of the shop wouldn't part with it unless I brought him something of equal or greater value, which I didn't have. So you just you didn't see him for sale and rarely did you see him unless somebody was playing with. Johnny Winters or John Hammond or Sun House or Book of White or some professional musician. And it just happened after 10 years that a friend of mine that builds guitars had a, his own guitar building store, shop. He, uh, somebody brought one and, and traded it in, I guess so that they could get a handmade guitar. And I heard about it through the grapevine and I begged him to, to sell it to me. I told him I wouldn't, wasn't gonna leave. Mm -hmm. I was gonna move in with him because I wasn't gonna take my, <laughs> I wasn't gonna take my eyes off of the guitar because it had taken so long just to find one. And he sold it to me, sure did. And it really is uh, put together with duct tape, isn't it? Well, it might appear that way, but... Uh, oh, you mean that's just for show? No, none, none of it is for show. Do you use this guitar all the time? You yes. don't use another guitar? That's your exclusive? I have another guitar that I got around the same time. 77 or 78, and it was just one year old at that time. It's a, a Gibson L5, which is like a, a carved arch top jazz style guitar. From it was, I guess it was about a 1976 or 77 model, and I I have played that one extensively for 35 years too. But I don't I don't tour with it overseas. But I might I might I might change. I, I may bring her over one of these tours. Just for a little fun. 
have you got a favorite song, Kent? Is, is, there, is there a favorite song? Favorite song? Or oh, favorite tune? Yes. My, my, my favorite song is called Trouble in Mind. St. James Infirmary is another one that I really love. Um, St. James Infirmary is, what, five, six hundred years old. Well, this next song is uh, a song that was my favorite, or my father's favorite song that I play. He wasn't real big on this blues stuff, but he liked old jazz and Dixieland style. And both him and my mother passed away within the last year and a half. So I became an official orphan. It's a very strange feeling, you know? So every, uh, every night that I'm on stage, I always do this song, and I think about dear old dad. It's a song you can sing at my funeral, if you like. I'd much rather sing it at yours. <laughs> the long walk to the graveyard, boys. Boys will tell you it's a song about a place in Leeds, or some will say it's about a place in Liverpool, some will say it's about a place in Newcastle. In America, there's at least four different versions Gambler's Blues, Crap Shooter's Blues, St. James Infirmary, Streets of Laredo. It's just one of those songs that's been out there forever and it, everyone's got a little bit different way of doing it, but I think the, the theme of the song has pretty much stayed the same. The he's might change to she's. I love this song. It's all about funerals. Either with a, a loved one dying, whether it's a woman or a man. Yeah. And, but Trouble in Mind is another song that's most of the historians will tell you it's from around 1926. A piano player by the name of Richard Jones was writing songs for Birth of Chippy Hill. Um, I think Louis Armstrong played trumpet on one of the early recordings of it. And it's just one of those tragedy songs mixed with hope for the future. The sun's gonna shine in my back door someday. That to me is just the most beautiful theme. When I sing it, there's 
parts of it that are misinterpreted as suicide. As what? Suicide. Oh, really? Yeah, because there's a, you know, it goes on about, oh, trouble in mind and my blue, but I won't be blue always. The sun's going to shine in my back door someday. So there's the, I'm sad now, but things are going to get better. You know, and then it goes on to, about the, the woman leave me and how blue you are and feel like living, sometimes you feel like dying. And then, it, and then it's, there's different verse, different parts of the verse where I'm going to lay my head on some old railroad track. And right there people start thinking suicide. This person is so depressed they're going to lay on the track and let the train run over. And the version that I sing, lay my head on some old railroad line, I'm going to let the midnight freight train satisfy my mind. And people, a lot, most people construe that to mean that suicide. But in fact, it's the sound of the train is pacifying the mind. Something about emotion. Yeah, the rhythm. Tell me something, because I was listening to that exactly that line the other day, and I was thinking, mm -hmm. what is it about the midnight special? Is it? Is it? Um, I think the midnight special. A metaphor for something, because the midnight special in one town couldn't be the midnight special in another town, could it? I mean, but it features I may be a lot, wrong, doesn't it? And it's very possible that I am, but I think. It's, I'm not sure if Lead Belly wrote it, but he gets credit for writing it. And it's, it, I may be wrong, but he's in prison, and the prisoners are in prison, and they hear the train at midnight. And they're thinking about being on that train, getting away from prison. Right in the Midnight Special. So the metaphor for the Midnight Special is freedom. But I think it's about jumping on the train and getting the heck out of there. And the midnight special would be the the one that, that's coming by at midnight, and the lights are shining from the train. They want to move on to a, a better situation. Prison. Yeah. Have, have you finished your guitar? Mm.